Hey, Coast Church family, welcome to Midweek Online. It's so good to see all of you guys, and thank you for taking the time out to spend some time with us midweek, to be encouraged and refreshed right in the middle of your week. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. Um, tonight, we've got something super duper special. I, I'm, I've been excited about this for a little while, and I don't know if you've ever felt like you wanted a big brother or you wanted a big sister or maybe you'd ever had grandparents in your life. You wanted grandparents and, you know, maybe you never had a dad in your life and you, you wanted that father figure in your life. Well, let me say this. One of the most beautiful things about living for God and about being his son or his daughter, being a child of God, is that not only are you a son of God, a daughter of God, but you belong to the family, the, the, the beautiful family of God. That is the church. And um, I'm telling you, I've got brothers and sisters around the world and I've got spiritual parents and uh, it's it's just an absolute beautiful thing. One of the, uh, the elders in my my life, one of the, the people that I look up to for, for wisdom and uh, I look up to for, for strength and I admire her walk with God in such a real way is a lady by the name of Shirley Buxton. Uh, she has ministered for years. She has been the president of ladies ministries and has written books and traveled and uh, built churches with her her late husband, and I'm telling you, just a phenomenal, phenomenal person. Uh, she was also the grandparent of some of my best friends and the, and the mom of one of my closest friends and, uh, and a big brother to me, Andrew Buxton. He's preached at Coast Church for us. And um, we, we haven't been able to have her uh, come and speak to us at Coast Church, which, um, hey, uh, put in the comments, you know, hey, we wanna see her. We, we want her to come to Ventura. Um, but I'm telling you, she has already ministered. Some of you have uh, read her book, um, A Thousand Pieces, which actually the uh, the true story of a miraculous healing of her husband, the late G Reverend Gerald Buxton, took place right here in Oxnard. Some of you have read that book. It's incredible. She's an incredible writer. Um, and, and she has ministered in a way that uh, just is... is I don't know. I, I can't put words on it because nobody comes close to the way that Shirley Buxton ministers. And uh, and I call her Granny. Uh, you know, when your best friends, that's her, their grandma. She just became my grandma adopted. And I'm telling you what, I love her so much. I'm so excited for her to share with our church tonight uh, just some words from her heart. So let's jump in. I, I asked her to speak especially to uh, people that are young in their faith. Not necessarily, you don't have to be young of age. And I, I think everybody's going to give Get something from this, but especially those of us that are maybe just coming back to church, or maybe we we're, we're brand new and just trying to figure this whole faith thing out. And she's got a special word for us tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing her at Coast Church in, in real life one of these days soon. So enjoy this. Jump in, type Amen, comment, and uh, and at the end, make sure you you type something to thank her. Uh, she's super tech savvy. She's on Facebook and Instagram and all of that. Um, incredible, incredible lady. Uh, no further ado, Shirley Buxton. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank Brother Scott for uh, giving me the opportunity to do this, and. Um, I'll tell you a secret, I'm glad that he asked me to speak to the young people and not the old people, even though I'm an old people because I enjoy young people and um, I, I, I know that uh, the future of the church and, and the church today depends so much on you and you are so crucial to the work of God. And so I, it gives me a, a great honor to be asked to talk to you a little bit today. And um, as, as I prepared for this, I, I took it very seriously. And um, I am, of course, you know, I don't know when you'll be seeing this, but, but today our, our uh, country is on fire and we have riots everywhere and so I, I feel sadness and anger and a combination of all of those and it makes me know um, more than I did uh, a few weeks ago how much we need God. We're desperately in need of God and so uh, as an older person I'm depending on you young people to protect the gospel and to carry on the work of the gospel of the church is in good hands. I'm not worried about it. But 
we must be vigilant and careful as we do the things of God. I'm, today I'm just going to speak for a few minutes and I'm going to give you three crucial points for the young believer. The first one is, and I, I hear myself sometimes when I'm speaking that I frequently say this, and it's, and it's so important that you understand who you are. I think for too long perhaps the church has not understood the, the power that it has. And so it is crucial that you understand who you are and that you're grateful that you've been called. The scripture says that no man can come to God except the Spirit draws him. So I'm speaking to you today. You're, I, I don't know who you are, never seen you before, but because you're watching this, you have been called of God. You didn't just stumble into a Bible study or you didn't just stumble into the church. God directed you there. He called you there. And I want to help you to understand that you are connected to the greatest thing on this planet. There's nothing greater. There's nothing that even comes close. I want to refer you to uh, Ephesians. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of verses, but I'd like for you to read the whole thing on your own time. Uh, Ephesians, the first chapter, uh, verses 1 through 23. I'm going to read to you verses 4 and 5. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the doctrine of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So Jesus has, a, I, I knew a family in our, our church in Garden Grove and they had uh, children and one of them was, was adopted. And the other one was a uh, two girls, and the other one was a biological child. And the one who was uh, uh, the the one who was adopted. Sometimes she would say, "There would have a little spat." She'd say, "Well, my parents chose me. You were just born. They had to take you." So you know, we're adopted. God chose us. He saw us. Uh, another scripture says it before the foundation of the world, when we were still in our mother's womb. Jesus saw us and chose us to be in, in the church of God. Another thing I want you to understand is that once you have the Holy Ghost, you are radically and totally changed. You'll never be the same. Even if for some reason, some silly reason, you would decide to leave the church, if you wander around uh, drunken on the streets of Los Angeles, you will never be the same, and you will never forget the experience of being filled with the Holy Ghost. You are totally and radically changed. And the change is, is permanent, and it goes with you all the time. It's not a garment that you might take off at night and hang in a closet. It's permanent, and it goes with you all the time. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're transformed. You're no longer, none of us, we're no longer the sinful person we used to be. Oh, we're still going to have problems and the Satan is still going to tempt us. Problems are still going to come our way. But we are totally transformed. We're changed. That change came about because of Calvary. And I think it helps all of us. I know it helps me and I've had the Holy Ghost for, I've had the Holy Ghost now for 61 years. And it helps me to think of Calvary and that Jesus, all that suffering he did, all that blood he shed, all those wounds he had, he did that with me in mind and with you in mind. And he did it for us personally. And had we been the only ones who were in sin and needed him, he would have done it for us. Please remember that. Think about that often. Jesus um, knows you even when he chose us. He knew that we weren't perfect. He knows all of our flaws and 
He knows the one that everybody else knows about, and he knows the secret one. Because he made us. He knows your abilities, your questions, your hang-ups, your confusion. He knows all about that. There's nothing hidden from him. And yet, you and I are created in his own image. We're created in the image of God. And I was listening to something uh, on the internet just a couple of days ago and reminded me that human DNA is made up of 3.1 billion elements. 3.1 billion. We're complex. Jesus made us, we're made in his image. And he looked down and when I was a little girl, he saw me and he said, I'll take her. With all of her flaws and her shortcomings, I still want her in my kingdom. And he said the same thing to you. Wherever he found you, there was nothing secret. He knows who you are and he chose you and you were made in his image. So that's the first point that I want to make to you is that you understand who you are, how valuable and how precious you are. The second thing is of a lighter nature and it's important though and it is that you develop a closeness with your pastor and his wife. Be close to them. Emulate them, follow them, see how they deal with things, listen to the words they say, watch their attitudes, and be like them. Your pastor will lead you to heaven. He's your shepherd and your sheep, and he will lead you to heaven. You need to ask questions. If you have questions, go to your pastor, go to the pastor's wife, and ask the questions. And more importantly, after you've asked the questions, be sure that you brave the answers because they will lead you to heaven. The third thing is that once you receive the Holy Ghost, the scripture says that we are to be witnesses. It would be so unfair of us in this desperate world that we're in, full of chaos and trouble and confusion and murder and mayhem. It would be so selfish of us and so against scripture for us to keep the answer. We know what the answer is. The answer is Jesus. And it would be so cruel of us to walk among such chaos and refuse to spread the answer, to spread the gospel, to spread the beautiful word of God. How often do you take your Bible? How often do you do it? How often do you open it? and read it. It should be a, a daily thing or, or more, more than once a day. And you need to be reflecting on the Word of God and thinking about it. Because we are to be a defender of the Gospel. If we're to be witnesses of it, we are to be a defender of it. And in order to do that, we need to study it. We need to ingest it. We need to love it and cherish it because it is the Word of God. There's an Old Testament story of, of um, Ahimahaz. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not real sure. But he was, there was a, this is in the Old Testament, and there had been a big battle. It's actually David. Uh, was the king then, and his son had, had been killed, Absalom had been killed, and uh, David wasn't there at the battle, And um, but at the battle field where Absalom had been killed, they had to, the uh, Joab knew that they had to get the word to David that his son had been killed. And he chose a Cushite to take the word to David and tell him, but there was another young man whose name was Ahimahaz, and he wanted to be the one to take the word. And Joab tried to talk him out of it, and he, he insisted, no, I want to be the one 
to take the message to David. And so finally Joab said, okay, and he sent Cushite, and he also sent Ahimaaz, or let him go. So David was sitting watching, and he saw the two runners appear, and the first one that got to him was Ahimaaz, and they did their regular greetings, and then David said, well, what, what is the news? And the young man said, um, uh, he stammered around and he said, well, um, he said, I, I'm not real sure. There was a great battle, but I'm not sure what happened in it. That's a crucial story, kind of funny sometimes. But if we are to be bearers, if we're of the Word of God, if we're be, to be witnesses, to our world, then we have to have the message. We have to know what it says. And I don't know of any magic tool that will just take the Word of God and put it in your mind. It takes work, it takes energy, it takes time to sit down and inculcate the Word of God into your heart because that is the only way. Your life will be a witness. And your friends will see you and that your life has changed, and that's a great witness. But when it comes right down to it and one of them says, well, how can I get this? How can I be saved? Then you've got to lean on the Word of God because actually it's not terribly important what I say or what you say. It's what the Word of God says. And the only way that we can be the witness that we need to be is that we get the Word of God in our heart. Remember, you're transformed now. You're changed, and your uh, likes and dislikes are going to change. And you may look at a party scene and think, I don't have time for that anymore. You may look at some, you probably will look at some worldly amusements that used to bring you great pleasure, and somehow you don't feel drawn to that, you don't feel attracted to that anymore. It's because you're transformed, and it's because you're changed. So those are the three points that um, I have to to give to you today. There's, you'll spend your whole life trying to work out your own salvation and be a great child of God. But these three are important. Know who you are. Recognize that God has called you into the greatest organism in this world. Respect and love and culture your pastor and his wife and get the Word of God in your heart. Be the great witness that God intended for you to be. Again, I, I'm thankful to Brother Scott for the privilege to talk to you today. God bless you. Wow, I'm telling you, wasn't that impactful and special and just heartfelt? Um, let, let me just say this, church. Uh, you know, first off, uh, thank you, Sister Shirley Buxton. Uh, from, from my heart, um, I, I just, I know to call you granny and I don't want to be disrespectful, but thank you so much from my heart uh, to yours tonight. Thank you for, for imparting and, and sharing with us that wonderful, wonderful word. And, uh, and Coast Church family, take it to heart. Do something about it. The word only works when we do something about it. We don't want to just be hearers, but we want to be doers. And if you want to live a, a faithful, fruitful life uh, like this great woman of God for years and years to come, I'm telling you, put it in to practice. It is so valuable and so important for us to hear the voices of our elders. And that's one of the reasons that we've wanted to do this uh, type of series for a while. Have some elders to speak into us because the years of wisdom and the years of knowledge and the years of spiritual dedication and foundation that they have are beneficial for us and we can build upon those. And anything that, uh, that we end up doing is going to be built upon the foundations that they are laying. And so we're thankful tonight and uh, we just want to honor uh, Sister Shirley Buxton for taking some time and sharing with Coast Church tonight. Thank you so much. God bless all of you guys. Hey, we will see you this Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, we're looking forward to having a great, great gathering. It's been powerful. We're in the Wounded series, and um, this weekend, I'm telling you, it's going to be another eye-opener, and I believe God is going to keep pouring in that healing. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week, Coast Church family. We love you.